Hello from sunny Athens. I'm Agelos Kayas, a professor at the University of Edinburgh and chief scientist at IHK. Today I'm doing a short whiteboard video for fast client bootstrapping. And the particular interest of looking at this problem is in the context of proof of stake protocols. Now, synchronizing with the blockchain can be a very intensive operation for a client that just joins the network. The reason is that the blockchain is an ever-growing database containing a wealth of transactional data, not all of which are needed to all clients. So how is it possible for a client to extract the information that they want from the blockchain without getting a big penalty in terms of performance. In the context of Bitcoin or any other proof of work blockchain for that matter, this problem has already been discussed by Nakamoto in the original Bitcoin paper. The way that the process works is that the client downloads and verifies only block headers, applying the longest chain rule, basically choosing the most difficult chain, and then the client will hold the headers of the winning chain and then selectively request to open those transactional data that are of interest to the client. Can this be applied to the proof-of-stake setting? Unfortunately, the answer is no. The reason is that in a proof-of-stake blockchain, block validity is not something that can be solely decided based on block header. The client needs to have at its disposal the information related to the stakeholder distribution. because this contains all the cryptographic key material that the client needs in order to verify the blocks. So it appears that we hit a roadblock. How is it possible to facilitate fast client bootstrapping without downloading all transactions? So it turns out that in order to do this efficiently, we'll need some extra magic element. We're going to call this playfully Mithril a sort of cryptographic method. So what is this? It's a cryptographic construction that enables a population of stakeholders to issue a signature on a given message. And it has the following three properties that are crucial for the job that we have in mind for that primitive. First, it has the behavior of a threshold cryptographic signature. This means that it's possible to produce a valid signature only if you read a certain ratio of consenting stakeholders expressed in terms of stake, let's say one half or two thirds and so forth. Second, like a multi-signature, the pre-signature fragments can be independently verified so as the stakeholders produce pre-signature fragments, these are verifiable in themselves. And furthermore, they can be publicly aggregated to the final signature. And finally, it is efficient. This means that the final signature is just of cost and size. And furthermore, producing the signature and verifying it is only logarithmically depending on the total number of stakeholders. So these are the three important characteristics of this scheme. Now, using Mithril, we can revisit fast client bootstrapping for a proof of stake blockchain like Ouroboros. Let's see how this works. 
So first of all, stakeholders will include their mithril keys together with the usual cryptographic key material. So the blockchain, as you have like UTXOs and accounts, will also contain mithril keys. Now, at regular intervals, full nodes will collect the current UTXO set in the form of a cryptographic commitment, which observe it's short, and will test whether they can produce a pre-signature. Now, this testing is essential because not all stakeholders will be eligible for issuing a pre-signature fragment for a given message. Only a random subset of them will be eligible. Now, when a sufficient number of pre-signature fragments are issued by those who are eligible, it will be possible to aggregate those fragments into the final signature. So here is the fragments and you can think of them aggregated into final signature sigma. Now, we will call this a checkpoint, which can be verified with respect to the previous UTXO commitment, and in this way, in principle, going all the way back to the Genesis block. What is interesting here is that because of the mechanism, these checkpoints are trustless. They don't require any additional trust assumption beyond those associated in the underlying blockchain protocol. In this way, a bootstrapping client has to only verify the sequence of such trustless checkpoints up to the most recent one in order to bring its state up to the current state of the blockchain. So starting from the Genesis block, we have a sequence of checkpoints that brings the client up to the present time. And then at the end, there might be a small number of blocks that needs to be additionally verified. In this way, we can make proof-of-stake blockchain bootstrapping truly efficient. This brings us to the end of this whiteboard video. Thanks for watching.